We bought a sailboat in the Met in 2020 and started cruising shortly after. After exploring the stunning northern Adriatic, we decided to sail south and explore Montenegro and Greece, and eventually end up in Turkey for the winter. At the time of the passage, the Corinth Canal was closed due to landslides, so we have to take the long way around the southern Peloponnese. The overall passage is about 1100 nautical miles, and we have no intention to rush the experience. Last episode, we visited a private, deserted island in the heart of Catalonia Bay, called Atacos. In this episode, our first stop is called the Vathi Bay, in the island of Ithaca. Although a well-protected anchorage, Wathi can get dangerous due to the funneling winds into the bay. The prevailing winds are here from the west, and during summer months, the velocity of the gusts intensify as the air pushes its way through the narrow channel. During one of these days, we witnessed this unattended boat drag anchor across the busy anchorage. Fellow cruisers did their best to prevent the boat from crashing into the other boats. The incident was reported to the port police. Unable to locate the owner of the vessel, the Hellenic Coast Guard ended up boarding the boat and re-anchoring the vessel into safety. Our next stop is Sami Town. Docking here proved to be a test for our med mooring skills. Although we are now getting familiar with the Greek style med mooring where you drop your anchor and back into the tonki or a dock, this turned out to be our first time doing the maneuver with no dock help. We happen to document the entire maneuver in detail and there will be a dedicated episode covering our experience coming soon in our channel. Our next stop is likely one of the most photographed sites in Greece, the Shipwreck Bay, located in the island of Zakynthos. This right here is the island of Zakynthos. Uh, we are on our way to the Shipwreck Bay. Um, that place is supposed to get a ton of tourists by around 10 a.m. So we woke up really early this morning and I hope to get there early so we have at least a couple hours to enjoy the beach and the, this famous Shipwreck Bay.
Although a beautiful anchorage, Shipwreck Bay, also known as Nawagyo Bay, is not recommended for overnight. It is open to the prevailing winds, and even on a calm day, like today, the anchorage gets quite rolly. We are lucky to be here on a calm day, but I can see how things can go wrong with strong westerly and heavy swell combined with soft sand sea bottom. Perfect recipe to lift your anchor. Besides, you have a constant reminder on the beach of what may happen if things go south. It's just magnificent and it gets like a zoo later in the day. But we got here early, got up at the crack of dawn at like 5.30, arrived around 7, and it's about 8 o'clock right now in the morning. And um, yeah, anyway, just wanted to share this with you guys. It's one of the most spectacular places I think we've been so far. <laughs> There are a number of speculations relative to the fate of the Panayotis and how it ended up on this pristine beach. Most common scenarios claim Panayotis was a smuggler ship that ended up on the beach on October 2, 1980. Its cargo and equipment were plundered following the incident. According to the captain's recollection, the ship ended up on the beach due to the bad weather and mechanical failure. He reported the incident, but the authorities were unable to protect the ship due to the fact that the beach was not accessible on foot by land. Shipwreck Bay, it is 9.30, we arrived here at 7.30 and we were the only ones at the beach. Um, so two hours later, you can see how many people are already in the beach and there are more arriving. So I can only imagine what place this place is going to look like in a couple hours. Um, so the first trip boat arrived around 9 o'clock, so my advice to all the cruisers out there, if you want to come over and visit the Shipwreck Bay, try to come here as early as you can because starting 9, this place gets a little crazy. <laughs> Africa, we 
On our way to south, we noticed this pristine bay with limestone dramatic cliffs and turquoise waters and dropped the hook for a couple of hours. For those of you planning to visit Shipwreck Bay and avoid the crowds at the same time, our recommendation will be go there as early as you can and spend the rest of the day in this magnificent bay located in the southeast of the Kintos Island. We are at this anchorage in Zakintos. I don't know the name of it, but it's f***ing beautiful. Next, we make a stopover to fill up our tanks on mainland grids in the small town of Katakoli and continue further south to the city of Polis, located in the historical Navarina Bay. The approach to the entrance of Navarina Bay from the north is somewhat nerve-wracking.
The narrow opening presents intimidating rock formations on both sides, but the middle of the channel provides enough depth even for larger vessels. Once you are in the bay, you have two options for anchoring. The most popular is the one in front of the historical city of Pylos, outside of the breakwater. The other on the north shore, which becomes the choice when the prevailing northerlies intensify. To the south of the Navarina Bay stands the fortress of Neocastro, the new castle, as it was named in contrast to the old castle, one of the best preserved fortresses in Greece. It was built by the Ottomans in 1573 after their defeat at the naval battle of Lepanto. Navarino Bay is best known by Battle of Navarino, a naval battle fought in October 1827 between Ottomans and Allied forces from British, France and Russian Empire. 60 ships sunk or destroyed in this very bay and more than 6,000 lives lost during the battle. It all took place right here in this bay. The scars of the battle are still in modern charts, drawing attention to the sum of the sunken equipment in the bay. Approximately 3 miles to the north to the entrance of the Navarina Bay is located another small horseshoe shaped bay. Recommended by the locals, this bay is supposed to be a great day anchorage so we decided to check it out before we continue our way south.
Our next stop is another historic town called Methoni. Located at the western end of the Peloponnese, Metoni has been a strategic location in the Med for nations who had interest in eastern sea routes. It first came into importance during the Venetian era, who took over the city from the pirates in 1125. Later, the city changed hands from Ottomans, Venetians, Russians, and French, up until the War of Greek Independence in 1800s. Our next stop is the second most populous city of the Peloponnese, named Kalamata. Like us, you probably heard the name in supermarkets, only interested in the taste of the ancient fruit, but ignorant of where the land lays and what it is about. Kalamata is our last chance to do the provisioning and filling up our tanks before we do the passage from the southern Peloponnese to the islands of Cyclades, located in the middle of the Aegean Sea. So we are in the southern Peloponnese right now at this stunning anchorage. You can maybe see CB behind me. Um, I came ashore to check out these gorgeous beaches. Kamanch stayed behind. He wanted to monitor the anchor. Uh, we dropped in pretty high winds when we came in, maybe 20 knots, and then the wind just completely shifted the other direction. So. Um, Kavanch wanted to just make sure the anchor doesn't come up since we've rotated like 180 degrees. So I am here solo enjoying some peaceful and lovely moments. As you can see, there's actually two bays behind me. There's a few sailboats in this one, but the place we're at is supposed to be less rolly with less swells. So that's what we were told and we opted for that. We um, are spending our last night here on the Peloponnese before we do a big crossing over to the Cyclades tomorrow. First stop will be Milos. And um, yeah, we weren't sure if we were gonna leave um, tomorrow or the next day, but we just checked the weather and it looks like tomorrow is the day. The weather uh, window opened up and um, yeah, we're gonna go for it. So it'll be exciting. We've really enjoyed the um, Peloponnese. It's just beautiful probably wouldn't have sailed this direction if the Corinth Canal was open. 
but it worked out great um, to explore and see this region of Greece. We love the Ioan Islands, and now we're ready to check out the Cladis. So looking forward to this passage. Should be a long day, maybe um, 65, 70 nautical miles it looks like. So we'll get up early, 435, and then probably get in before it gets dark. So looking forward to a nice day sailing and uh, a beautiful new island to explore. Next episode, we're going to cover our passage to the Cyclades Islands, CB's first time in Aegean Sea. Later, we're going to get a taste of the infamous Mount Temibins.